What's going on, everybody? I'm Tank, and this is another episode of Roadie Reactions. Get with this. In today's reaction video, I am continuing my adventure with Ginger. And I'm super fired up about it, man, because when I discovered this band a few months ago on this channel from you guys, it hit me pretty quickly how talented this band is all the way around, man. And admittedly, we all listen to a lot of different bands that we could probably say have some band members that stand out above the rest, talent-wise. But these guys, uh-uh. Everybody all the way around is incredibly, incredibly talented, man. Incredible musicians, an incredible singer, and they put on great live shows, so I'm super excited about this. And recently I checked out a couple of their live performances from Melbourne, which they did for their first live album, Alive in Melbourne, which by the time you see this is out. And speaking of that album, I recently got to sit down with Tatiana and Eugene to talk to them about that and a bunch of other stuff for another episode of Interview with the Roadie. So by the time you see this, that will also be out on my channel and I would appreciate it if you checked it out. It was super fun and they are wonderful people. But with this one, I'm gonna take it back a couple years. We're gonna check out a live performance of a song that I haven't heard yet, that was super recommended by you guys, and I'm excited, so let's go. I will link this original video in the description below, and today, I'm gonna be listening to Ginger, and I'm gonna be checking out a live version of the song, Who Is Gonna Be The One. Let's go. Oh, sick guitar tone. All right, man. What blows me away about this performance already is, um, you know, dated a few years back and they showed the crowd and it's not that big of a crowd. So this has got to be as they started blowing up and every successful band has been there, man. We talked in our interview about that where, you know, they've played shows to like 30 people at a time. Damn near every band has been there. That's how you, you know, grow and you get your chops and try out new stuff. But could you imagine being at a daytime festival slot like this and not knowing who this was and that sound comes out on stage? I'd lose my f***ing mind, man. Um, right off the bat, I'm seeing a lot of different instruments that I've seen um, with the most recent videos. So they've obviously switched since then. I'll get into more details about it later. I kind of want to take more of this in, but um, sounds great, man. Killer guitar tone, killer bass tone, man. Everybody's work in this band is incredible. I mean, as a former bass player, right away, Eugene stands out to me. But I mean, Vlad and Roman, it's just, dude, they're they're all so good. And obviously, we can't forget about Tatiana's voice as well, because I think that should go without saying, though. Let's keep going. Oh! Oh. 
So one cool thing I wanted to point out that is interesting when you're performing live, I'll try and get a good picture of it and I'll put it on there, but I noticed stage left over by Eugene, there's a timer on stage. Uh, at a lot of these festivals like this, the way that the show production goes on is really dependent on bands staying on time. So a good stage manager will be up there to make sure that all the bands are staying on time. But they also often on festivals and tours put a clock on stage for the bands to see. So I just saw it has 28 minutes left. So I'm assuming this is their opening song, the way that Tatiana came on stage and they had a 30 minute set in the middle of the day and they're bringing it. Super cool, man. Um, let's talk guitars really quick. You know, we've seen in the newest videos, Roman's playing uh, OD Guitars, which is from a luthier in Israel, Omer Deutsch. Super sweet looking products and they sound killer, man. He takes his background with industrial design and mixes it with his experience as a luthier and makes really great products. But Roman's playing an ESP. He's playing a Horizon. Um, Man, I was really taken aback to see that because we joke a lot on this channel. We see a lot of ESPs and that Horizon is what uh, Empu from Nightwish, his famous EV1 guitar is based on that specific model, man. And it sounds really good. So um, let's keep going. We'll talk more. Dude, her voice chokes me up, man. It's She has so much power in that scream and that growl, man. It's so f***ing impressive. Dude, these musicians, man. Um, I know these guys are getting bigger, but I just want to say just they're criminally, criminally underrated. These guys are better musicians than most other bands I've seen that are way bigger than them. Um, so let's go back to Vlad on the drums. Uh... Tama kit, and he's got the Zildjian symbol sticker on the front of his kick. Obviously, that usually shows the sign of an endorsement, so it might have been a newer endorsement at the time. Um, so he's obviously using, you know, Zildjian symbols and displaying that proudly. If you notice next to Vlad, there's a MacBook sitting there that controls the tracks for the show. Um, we've talked about tracks on this channel. A lot of people have a bad stigma with the word tracks. They think when you you say backing tracks, you're talking about like, you know, lip syncing and people not really playing their instruments. That's not what we're talking about at all, man. You can do a lot of stuff with tracks, not just, you know, more sounds. So their click track, what they're using to stay on tempo, that's coming from their tracks in their in-ears. Um, I don't know if they're doing it, but there are ways to program your lighting rig through MIDI that runs to your tracks and it cues different lighting scenes. And a lot of the times it's just to replicate sounds that you don't have enough band members for, whether it's percussive elements or synth or intros and outros and stuff like that. It's just stuff that's on the studio album that they can't replicate live that they want in the tracks to be there so it sounds more full. It's not cheating at all, it's just adding to the overall show. Um, and then Eugene 
We normally see him nowadays playing that Achilles 5, which is his custom signature bass from Overload Guitars, which is a custom guitar company from Rome, Italy. In this one, I've seen it once before, actually twice before, I think. That is a copy of a... Um, not, oh, God, what's the company? Oh, I'm going to lose my mind here. Sorry. But anyways, he's playing a copy of a Monarch 5 that a luthier in Kiev made for him. Actually, not for him. He has said somebody else owned that before him. But it's a luthier there that used to work for this company that made that guitar. And it is a copy of the Monarch 5. And he's said many times he loves that bass a lot, even though he's exclusively playing Overload now. Interesting rad change. Oh, let's go talk about some of this. There's some more gear stuff I, I want to get to that I didn't. Let's go. F***ing killer, man. And as I said in the video, like daytime slot like that and a band comes out and brings it that hard, that just sets the bar for the rest of the bands for the rest of the day, man. I mean, seriously, their, their performance and their musicianship is just incredible all the way around. There were a couple other gear things that I didn't get to mention. I noticed... Eugene was using a full stack of Ampeg cabinets. Looked like he had an Ampeg SVT4 that he may have been using, but I did see another amp on the top of there that he could have been using. Might have been another preamp, I'm not sure. And then Roman was using Mesa. Looked like it could have been a dual or triple rectifier and then a 412 cabinet. Um, but man, sound-wise, it sounded killer. I loved it. I cannot wait to check out more and more of this band, man. Everything I've heard has been awesome. And even though it fits into that metal genre, they have such a uniqueness to what they're doing and they blend in other inspirations. And it really sounds like nothing else that's out right now, to me at least. So, man, that was killer. Thank you guys for recommending that. And as a reminder again, I do have that interview with Tatiana and Eugene that's available on my page now if you wanna go check that out. And if this is your first time here, feel free to click subscribe. I'm releasing new videos all the time. So if you turn the alerts on, you'll be notified the second new stuff does come out. If you liked this video, I would greatly appreciate the like. And if you disliked it, no big deal, man. There is a dislike button down there. Go ahead and click it and move on. I'm also on a ton of different social media. I even have a Discord server that I hang out on often. And it's a great place to suggest videos for me to check out as we do read through all that. So I'll link that in the description below if you'd like to join. My handle on everything social media related is at Tank the Tech. Thank you so much once again for watching. I will be back very soon with another episode of Roadie Reactions.